the the great part about my job is you get to help people that need your help. I just can't imagine a worse thing a lawyer can do. Their life looked picture perfect from the outside. But who knew the walls from within were cracking, crumbling, and burning to the ground? It was very disappointing when you find out your lawyer basically robbed you, knowing that he knows everything that I've been through. I just don't get it. And for all of you Real Housewife fans, you were probably just as shocked as me to see the events rapidly unfolding between Erica Girardi and her powerful rock star attorney husband, Tom Girardi. Thomas Girardi is accused of stealing millions from clients. Girardi stands accused of pocketing a fortune from his clients. Their names alone are pretty much synonymous with the over-the-top, expensive lifestyle flaunted on the show. And it's shocking to think that these very images, with both of them living in the absolute lap of luxury in Beverly Hills of all places, these same images that we see of them parading around and showing off their extravagant mansions and expensive gifts and clothes and shoes and rings and pools, within a few years, all of these prized possessions will no longer be theirs. And instead, all of these items will be sold off with Tom's business and personal assets being involuntarily forced into bankruptcy. So the question worth asking is, were any of these items really ever theirs? Why we decided to file suit against them, and it was all because Erica filed for divorce. That when she filed for divorce, we realized that uh, that she probably was doing that because the money was gone. And the rapid descent of this power couple is the ever so cliche story of riches to rags, excess, wealth, and greed, but with so many twists and turns, and even more questions. Like, who done it? Are they guilty? And were they both involved? This man's kind of indestructible. You know, he's 78, going to be 79. He's still running the firm and he's still out there and still doing it. Every day, this case gets more and more complex. From divorce filings to selling of assets and new victims coming forward. So today, let's discuss the story of the not so pretty mess that is Erica Jane and Tom Girardi. Girardi's stunning fall from grace. Oh, the reason I I am divorcing Tom is because he cheated on me with the judge 10 years earlier. You know, I heard that and I just kind of shrugged and said, this is all just kind of TV nonsense. Let's begin our story nine days before Erica filed for divorce from Tom. On October 24, 2020, an interview of Tom Girardi was published online, and it gave some really revealing insights into Tom's psyche, his state of mind, and his prowess. He comes across as a very likable, harmless, and unassuming grandpa type that would not hurt a fly. And he is very aware of just how vulnerable his clients are because most of his clients have suffered unimaginable pain. And I think when I think back of my legal history of the nice results I've had, every one of them was a wonderful person who was badly hurt, who lost a husband or lost a wife, who walks around with a limp, those sorts of things. And is very nice and sweet. That's what wins the case. It ain't the lawyer, baby. Now this sounds sweet and caring and even genuine. By the way, is it just me or does his voice kind of remind you of Winnie the Pooh? Get you up in a tree, just hand me the beehive. I think he wants to stick with you. As sweet and caring as he sounds, by this time, he was already knee deep in a bevy of lawsuits. Probably one of the most public is the story of Joe Rui Gomez. In September of 2010, Joe and his girlfriend, Jessica Morales, 
were at home and they were about to watch a football game when all of a sudden, an explosion within their home occurred. Joe managed to escape the home, but not before his body was about 80 to 90% covered in burns, and tragically, his girlfriend did not survive. Tom Girardi ended up taking on his case, and he sued the company PG&E and won. And subsequently, Joe was awarded $12 million. But to this day, he has only received about $1 million of that settlement. And you have to remember that Joe is in constant pain and suffering. And Tom didn't pay this victim, who he had just previously spoken about so caringly about all of these victims who have been suffering. So the moral of the story is, don't ever trust words only. Actions are so much more telling. So as you can already tell, Tom is a really complex guy. And in my opinion, he takes advantage of his unassuming, down-to-earth persona, which lets people feel as though they can let their guard down, as if he's a family member. And he reminds me of one of those used car salesmen because he has mastered the art of human behavior, of body language. He knows how to read people. He knows how to win people over. He knows how to persuade. In other words, he is the master of manipulation. You got to tell your client, you are being watched. If you go to the bathroom, if you're in the men's room, you're in the ladies' room, there are going to be two or three jurors in there, and they're listening to what you say, if you say something. They're watching the way you behave, etc. And you got to put your clients on guard that they're being looked at everywhere in that courthouse. Those jurors are watching every little move you make, and you better make sure you put your clients on guard, your expert witnesses on guard, that that's taking place. Probably the best analysis on this that I've heard to this date about Tom is from an ex-FBI negotiator whose name is Chris Voss, and he's done many speaking engagements, he's written books, and he's pretty much an expert on all things with crisis negotiations. He took the time to study Tom Girardi. And here's what he had to say. It was Tom Girardi, voted top trial attorney in California several years in a row by the Bar Association. He gets a voted top trial attorney so many times that when they put it on the front page, they say, again. Wow. So he comes in and he's a guest of my class at USC. And he stepped And I know he's a top trial attorney, but I don't know his style. I figure he's going to be an attack dog. Because I spent so much time in New York, you know, I'm used to attack dog attorneys. And Tom walks into the class and he says, you know, the key to negotiation is being nice and gentle. Now, what Tom does by being nice is get you to drop your guard. And Tom is an immovable, unrelenting opponent. And that's why he's so successful and he's ridiculously nice about it. He smiles and he chats with people. And he always talks about how we'll collaborate with each other in the future. He's, you, you get into an argument with him, and immediately he'll bend it, where he's talking with you about how you and I are going to be successful together 10 years from now mm. or in the future, which is the same thing a hostage negotiator does. Like if you're barricading the bank, I'm going to say, my first goal is to get you out of there alive. Well, I picked a point in the future that we can collaborate on. Tom Girardi does this instinctively. And he's just super nice about it. Mm. I mean, like you, either you're going to cooperate with him because you like him so much, he's never going to let up on you, or more than likely you're going to say something accidentally. But Tom knows he's just relentlessly nice, Mm. relentless, and the most charming guy you ever met in your life. Wow. So you don't have to be aggressive. To get what you want. To get what you want. It's interesting to hear this perspective. Especially when you re-listen to the voicemails that Tom left his clients basically telling them, trying to get them on board with being okay postponing getting their settlement money. And it really gives new context and meaning into how cunning and how convincing he really was. This is Tom Girardi calling. I don't want you mad at me. I'm working like a dog to try and get this thing resolved. As you know, there's 
there's part of this is that the mesh cases have to be signed like in this in various groups together. I managed to cut you out of that group because the others are not resolved yet. Then, although the bankruptcy court was great, I got to get approval of the regular court of the whole thing. The courts are closed, as you know, and it isn't my fault. I mean, I would more than anything like to see you get your money and get out of here and like me and everything be sweet. Um, I, I saw the assistant presiding judge <clears throat> at a trial lawyer's event. And I said, I have some real problems. It's nothing to the court. It'll take 10 seconds, but I, I got to get some sign offs and you're not the only one I have. And he said, Tom, he said, give me two weeks. I'll make sure I'll get you a person. So I said, okay, great. Anyway, I want you to know that I'm doing my very best and don't be mad at me. I know it's very frustrating to wait so long for the settlement and then to be delayed further, but I'm in your corner. Believe me, we'd like our money just like you'd like yours. So Although I, I don't want you mad. That's very important. Tom also further explained his rationale and method for getting exactly what he wanted. You're almost exuding a energy of humility. Um, I don't know what the, the right words would be, but you're speaking to them in a fashion that is so amicable, that is so heart to heart almost. How did you get your first date? You didn't, get, you didn't get the first date by saying, I'm picking you up at 7 o'clock on Friday. Be. <laughs> you got your first date by saying, hey, Mirror, um, do you think maybe Friday you could squeeze me in a little bit, about 7 or so? Do you think that'd be possible? That'd be really great. You have a much better shot at the yes. And that's what you're doing here. You want a shot at the yes. The Los Angeles Times reported that the state of California has acknowledged that its investigators have mishandled years of complaints against Tom Girardi. And the stunning public admission comes after the Los Angeles Times published an article that detailed how Tom kept his law license absolutely pristine, despite numerous cases against him at the state bar, as well as around 100 lawsuits that were filed against him and his firm. And many of those lawsuits were alleging misappropriation of funds. And once again, his record has been pristine. So to put that into perspective, normally, if a lawyer has even received one of those complaints similar to this, it would have been investigated and if found conclusive, would have led to disbarment. Just one of those complaints. One of the lawyers that are heading a lawsuit against Tom Girardi is Jay Edelson. He's the founder and CEO of Edelson PC. And he recently made an appearance on the Reality Life podcast where he provided some of his thoughts on the case. Tom has been stealing money from clients for apparently decades and a lot of money. And the California bar knew about it. Other lawyers knew about it. Judges knew about it. And nobody did anything. He also cautioned that while it's easy to get caught up in the glitz, the glam, the gossip, and all that is the madness of this case, there's an even bigger and important issue that people should be focusing on. The key thing that that I want the, the press and the world to examine is not just you know, the salacious stuff of Erica Jane getting tens of millions of dollars for a singing career. That's fun. We can all watch that. But the bigger thing is Tom has been stealing money from clients for apparently decades and a lot of money. And the California bar knew about it. Other lawyers knew about it. Judges knew about it. And nobody did anything. 
Tom had really powerful connections with judges and cops and politicians all around the LA area. And he was also a huge financial donor for many causes. And I mean, this clip from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, how many police chiefs do you see making appearances on any of the other shows? And I'm not alleging that this chief did anything nefarious, but it just shows how powerful Tom Girardi's reach and status were. So a little bit more about the lawyer, Jay Edelson. He filed a class action lawsuit against Tom, and he alleges that Erica Jane was also complicit in her estranged husband's alleged financial misdoings. We believe we're going to be able to prove that Erica was incredibly involved in uh, in the bis- not just the, the law firm, but also he was loaning money to her company, tens of millions of dollars to her company. And we think that money came from client funds. And um, and we're going to look into all of that. And that's all going to be, you know, part of part of the proof that we showed to a jury that she was knee deep in this fraud. And she can say, oh, she didn't know anything about it. Um, and uh, I, I, I think that's going to be hard for her to convince a jury of. There are so many allegations and the potential damages that Tom has caused financially and emotionally to his clients is absolutely shocking. But what's in store for him is the possibility of being charged criminally as well. And a federal judge in Chicago, the U.S. District Judge Thomas M. Durkin, he froze Tom's assets after finding that he misappropriated at least $2 million in client funds that were owed to the families of those killed in the crash of a Boeing jet in Indonesia. And at a contempt hearing, the judge called Tom's conduct unconscionable. And he said that he was referring him to the U.S. Attorney's Office for a criminal investigation. And he was quoted as saying, no matter what your personal financial situation is, no matter what kind of pressures you are under, if you touch client money, you are going to be disbarred and quite possibly criminally charged. It's Ethics 101. In that same day, the U.S. Attorney's Office filed a motion asking for all the sealed documents to start a criminal investigation. So here's the sad part. There is almost no money left, at least on paper. And I'm sure that there's going to be forensic accountants that will be spending years upon years going through documents to make sure that there were no funds that were sent offshore. But in the meantime, the Girardi's financial situation And more importantly, the financial situation for the victims who are owed their money is looking bleak. Because lenders haven't been paid, and the Girardi's mansion, it has multiple loans on it, the law firm has multiple liens against it, and according to Tom, he once claimed to have a net worth of almost $80 million in assets. In a report that was just released by Radar Online, reports that Tom is currently making $2,958 a month. What an absolute difference a few years can make. So the latest news revolves around the speculation about the state of Tom's mental health. And in February 2021, Tom was placed under a temporary conservatorship with his brother, Robert Girardi, and his brother assumed control of his daily activities and his personal care. And additionally, court documents from March revealed that Tom was diagnosed with late onset Alzheimer's and dementia. So many people are questioning the validity of these claims, especially in light of Tom seemingly being alert and his usual self right before this public legal nightmare began. I don't know, this man's kind of indestructible. You know, he's 78, going to be 79, still running the firm and he's still out there and still doing it. Isn't that amazing? It's wonderful. Well, that's why I feel like you could never stop working. That is one feisty bastard. (laughs) I am married to one. (laughs) This morning he was like, I I spoke to him before, you know, I came to work and he was like, yeah, I'm on the plane, you know, I'm on my way to Austin. Cause he's got, you know, he's going to some lawyer thing. I was like, great baby. He's like, yeah, I gotta go, I'm at the end of the railway, bye. 
I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. you know, so he's out there doing it. Let alone, he is a huge strategist. So there are a lot of skeptics out there as far as if this is real or if it's not. On June 9th, Tom spoke publicly about his view on his current medical situation regarding being placed in the care of his brother as well as his entire estate. And he told the judge, Obviously, I disagree with the conservatorship altogether. And he also stated how he wanted to end the conservatorship. And he stated, I think we should put together the reasons why the conservatorship should be dissolved and then we'll address it. Right now, I have nothing to say to the court. The problem is, who knows what is actually the truth? Is this all part of a big, elaborate scheme? Or is he really suffering from some serious cognitive medical issues? The verdict is still out on what is the truth. But even more interesting is how the divorce filings are playing out. So on election day of 2020... Erica made a public statement about her decision to end her marriage when she stated the following. After much consideration, I have decided to end my marriage to Tom Girardi. This is not a step taken lightly or easily. I have great love and respect for Tom and for our years and the lives we've built together. It is my absolute wish to proceed through this process with respect and with the privacy that both Tom and I deserve. I request others give us that privacy as well. And, you know, I have so many questions surrounding the divorce. Is it real or is it all part of an elaborate plan to keep whatever financial equities they have left? And the things spinning around in my head are the various disjointed storylines that they've kind of put out into the public that just don't seem to sit well with me. For starters... If Tom really does indeed have Alzheimer's or dementia or both, then shouldn't Erica want to stay married to Tom and support him in sickness and in health? Because if he really has a cognitive decline, then wouldn't this whole situation have been beyond his control? And in addition, there was this huge scandal back in December after Erica posted and then quickly deleted a post that accused Tom of having an affair And she shared text messages from his alleged mistress, who happened to be a judge. (laughs) The whole thing is super confusing, as there seems to be many reasons for the filing of the divorce. And what is undeniable is how much Erica has thanked Tom over the years for all he has done for her career. And she really credits him for the reason the world was introduced to Erica Jane. So if we look back at old interviews, it really gives insight into their relationship. You have been married for 16 years to your husband, Tom, and he's a little more serious because he's a a lawyer. he's a lawyer. Yeah, so was he supportive of you joining this cast and doing this? Yes. This is the greatest thing about Tom. He is just so supportive and so kind. And he was like, yes, E, I support you. Let's get out there. I missed that part of myself because I had become Tom's wife and I am completely and totally grateful for everything that Tom has ever given me, shown me, taught me, whatever you can say, um, provided for me. But there was also a sense that, you know, you or I feel this way, and maybe this isn't a popular stance, but you can become a little too absorbed with your husband's career sure. and start to identify with them solely and lose who you are. And he, he wants his wife home sometimes, yeah. but the problem was he showed me how to do this and he didn't think I was, I'm his best <laughs> yeah. student. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he showed taught, me a little too much. Too well. He taught me a little too yeah. well, showed me a little too much of the playbook and then yeah. gave me the ball and I ran for the end zone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. and he hadn't seen me soon. Let's talk about probably the best theory that I've heard when it comes to this case. And it's from no other than attorney extraordinaire, Emily D. Baker Esquire. And if for some reason you haven't heard of her, then you need to check out her channel. I absolutely love her and her content. And she theorized, and by the way, this is all speculation. She theorized that the law has finally caught up with Tom and his actions because of none other than COVID. That's right. COVID. Probably the first and only positive association to something related to this virus that we'll probably ever hear about. And listen to her amazing theory. 
So here's my speculation, and this is just my conspiracy speculation on what's happening with this. It looks like what he's been doing is getting in these very large judgments, millions and millions of dollars of judgment, and Tom has won three judgments over a billion dollars, okay? It's crap tons of money, but it looks like he was taking in the judgments and then paying back old debtor, debtors instead of paying the client creditors. And it looks like every judgment came in, money was going out to try to shell game it, almost like a Ponzi scheme where the new investors, like Bernie Madoff, the new investors pay the old investors who are now getting mad and want to sue you. But COVID slowed down all of the courts. It slowed down everything. So if he was banking on judgments getting approved and coming forward, then COVID slowing down the courts and in some cases shutting down the courts for months, I think froze that money coming in because judgments weren't getting approved and going through the court system because the courts were all closed. And then it came to a head. And once it started, once all the creditors started realizing what was happening, everybody sued. Like everybody went to court to try to get in line when all these assets do get liquidated. And I don't know what's left other than Erica's clothes and car because the house has a bunch of liens on it too. And I also want to touch on Erica's legal liabilities for a second because Yes, just because she's filing for divorce, that does not mean that she's off the hook legally. And in the federal case that's out there, there's an allegation that Tom's law firm gave a $20 million loan to Erica's company, which is called EJ Creative. And if her company owes that money, it's her company that will be liable and she may have to declare bankruptcy if she's not able to pay off that loan. So as Emily described, And I think that this is the perfect analogy. This entire case is truly a house of cards. And every day, more and more information is uncovered. And more importantly, I am so happy that the California State Bar is finally starting to conduct an internal investigation about the mishandling of complaints against Tom. And hopefully this will lead to more oversight that will prevent and protect unassuming clients from malpractice. I guess the silver lining for the clients who have not yet received their rightful settlements from the Girardis is that there is also a possibility that the state could have some liability for inadvertently allowing these transgressions to continue on for decades. And if only someone, anyone, had intervened nearly half a century prior, would these events have even occurred? So there you have it, folks. I'm sure at some point in the future, I will be doing a follow-up video on the matter, but until that time, hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and go ahead and check out all of my other deep dives on my channel. See you in the next one. Bye.